Emeralds have such a unique history and so many interesting traits. It also feels like they're getting more and more rare with every year. Here's everything you need to know about Emerald, the birthstone for May. Emerald is actually of the green variety of the barrel species, and other varieties of barrel include Morganite, which is that peachy pink color, and Aquamarine, which is a light blue. This is interesting because both Aquamarine and Morganite are known for being really eye clean, especially in large carrot sizes. It's one of their most amazing traits and makes them really awesome for different types of jewelry, especially large cocktail rings. Emeralds are pretty much the opposite of this. What makes them interesting is that they are mined completely differently and they also grow in nature completely differently. Than so we actually find them in what's called hydrothermal veins and they have to be mined from hard rock. So it's very difficult mining. A lot of explosives have to be used and this contributes to one of their most unique characteristics which is very well known and that is their high level of inclusions or what some people like to call the jardin which of course is French for garden and alludes to that kind of mossy appearance that they sometimes have. Another interesting thing about their inclusions, which are sometimes called fissures, is that they can either be what's called one, two, or three phase inclusions. And this refers to being filled with air, with gas, or with liquid. And in the case of a three phase inclusion, all three. This isn't something you really have to worry about as a consumer or if you wanna buy or wear emeralds, but if you were to see it on a gemological report, for example, that's what it means. Something else you might see on a gemological report, such as a colored stone report from the GIA, is the level of treatment or oil that the emerald has. And yes, nearly all emeralds are treated in order to reduce the appearance of those inclusions. So sometimes something like a cedar oil is used, that used to be very common. Now a lot of different synthetic treatments are being used, but that's okay, it just means that they tend to last a bit longer and work a little bit better. So when you're buying an emerald, you're gonna see this on a report or described by a jeweler or a gem dealer as either F1, F2, or F3. F1 being the small amount of oil and F3 being a larger amount. And that just means that's what was required in order to give emeralds a little bit more of that smoother texture and appearance. Of course, it goes without saying that if you do find an emerald with amazing color, good saturation, medium to medium dark tone, and it has no treatment whatsoever, the price tag is going to be significant. As you can imagine, because most emeralds are treated, you do have to be a little bit more cognizant of how you wear them as well as how you store and clean them. In general, the treatment should last a lifetime. You really don't have to get emeralds retreated, but in order to make sure that you don't have to do that, you definitely wanna make sure that you're not storing your emeralds in very dry conditions because that's going to kind of make the oil seep out of the emerald. A dry air is going to kind of pull the oil or the treatment right out of the stone potentially. In order to make sure that that doesn't happen, one of the best ways to store an emerald is actually in a silk pouch because that natural silk is going to help keep the humidity level perfect for the emerald and kind of also keep it protected from any scratching or rubbing up against anything else that might be in your safe or your jewelry box. So a silk pouch is actually perfect. Having said all of that, I have seen a lot of jewelers and various content creators and things on social media saying that emeralds are absolutely not appropriate for everyday wear and therefore are a no-no when it comes to engagement rings, for example. As someone who actually has an emerald engagement ring, of course, I need to disagree with this. The truth is that emeralds are a seven and a half to an eight on the Mohs hardness scale, which is actually very appropriate for daily wear. It compares to stones like tourmalines and topaz. And yes, they're definitely more prone to scratches, let's say, than something higher on the Mohs scale, like a ruby, sapphire, or a diamond. But in reality, Every gemstone is going to be prone to scratches and chips over long periods of time, especially with daily wear, even diamonds. One thing that you definitely do want to avoid when looking for stones for an engagement ring or really any type of jewelry is surface reaching inclusions. This is an inclusion, a fissure, for example, that has started in deep in the depths of the stone and has come all the way to the surface of the emerald. This makes it a lot more prone to damage. So what really is the connection between the emerald as a gem species and the emerald cut and shape when it comes to any gemstones? It definitely is named after emeralds, the emerald cut, and this is because it is the shape that we see emeralds cut in most often. You definitely sometimes see some other elongated 
cuts more often like a pear or an oval sometimes but you rarely see an emerald cut into a round for example this is because those elongated shapes including the emerald cut really nicely mimic the natural crystal of the emerald and how it grows in the earth so you tend to get those thinner kind of long crystals and because high value emeralds again they're very rare and when they have great color and saturation and not too many inclusions they are definitely one of the most expensive gemstones on earth definitely more so than diamonds so when the cutter is cutting the rough crystal into a gemstone for jewelry they are trying to save as much weight as possible and those elongated cuts are giving them nice good carat weight stones without wasting too much of the original crystal. When it comes to the emerald cut itself it's actually a gemstone cut that tends to maximize the color of the emerald as well as minimize those fissures and other inclusions. So it's really just a great cut for the stone because it creates a very lively and beautiful stone that really shows off the color and as you'll hear me say a million times color is the most important value factor when it comes to any color gem color is so important that even when it comes to emerald if the saturation or the tone is too light in the mineral it's actually just referred to as a green barrel and not an emerald at all actually come across many pieces of emerald jewelry especially online and in pieces that are kind of labeled emerald slices or organic emeralds or kind of things of that nature that are so pale they are a very very light minty green and i do feel like it's wrong to label those things as emeralds they should really be labeled as green barrel instead so other than how emeralds are formed on earth and how they're mined one of the other reasons why this is considered such a rare and special gemstones are the elements that it contains in its chemical structure. All emeralds contain aluminum, oxygen, and silicone, three elements that are actually very prevalent on earth, but they also contain two other elements which are extremely rare on earth and why they're not found in very many places in the world. The first one is the element beryllium and the second one is how emeralds get their color and that is trace amounts of chromium. Chromium is a very famous element to us gemologists because it creates a lot of very special effects in very rare gems. So it's the same element, for example, that makes rubies red. And it's also the element responsible for giving Alexandrite their color and their color change. The other cool thing about chromium is what is famous for giving emeralds their trademark glow. And as I'm gonna mention in a second, Colombian emeralds in particular are known for having a bit of this otherworldly internal kind of glow to them. And this is what chromium also does when it's in high amounts in an emerald. As I mentioned, source can be very important when it comes to emeralds because there's just not very many of them found in the world and when it comes to emeralds they are one of the oldest found gems on earth so one of the first sources of course was actually Egypt and they were found there as early as 3500 BC and that's how they get their association with Cleopatra for example but after that one of the oldest sources is definitely Columbia in general Colombian emeralds are known for their high chromium content which gives them that beautiful trademark green and that beautiful glow now, as I mentioned, two famous mines within the country are Muzo and Shavor. And Muzo is one that is known for having a brighter green, definitely that kind of glowy, almost fluorescent green. And this is sometimes called alpine green. Shavor, on the other hand, is known for having more of a bluish green, a little bit of a darker tone and a little bit less glow. Now, in general, when we find stones that have that description, they also tend to be a little bit higher clarity. These are stones that we sometimes refer to as duck neck green because, it, again, it has a little bit more of that bluish green hue. When we talk about other sources when it comes to emeralds, Zambia is one that has become quite popular in the last decade or so. They are producing beautiful emeralds and in general their color is definitely compared more to that Chavor style of stone. From South America are Brazilian emeralds and these are very interesting stones because they are also a bit newer on the market. They didn't really properly enter the market until the 60s and this is because once they were studied a little bit more closely it was found that they were actually getting their green color from the element vandium versus chromium and originally 
gemologists felt it like meant that they weren't really true emeralds because they didn't have that same chemical structure but luckily and I think very fairly they are now very much considered beautiful emeralds coming very close by from Colombia obviously being mined in Brazil and they also have beautiful color a little bit less common on the market but if you find them they are definitely beautiful gems to consider now if you absolutely love emeralds and really want to get that look in a piece of jewelry but in order to maybe get the quality that you like or the size that you want it might be a little bit out of your price range there are some other stones that can be very very similar to emerald in their best qualities so this would include beautiful high quality green garnets including a demitoid garnet or a savorite garnet as well as green tourmalines. Green tourmalines can sometimes get a bit dark and or have a more of a yellowish green tone but you can definitely find them with absolutely gorgeous emerald like color as well. The benefit with having a tourmaline is that they tend to be extremely eye clean with very low inclusion so if you want that color but you don't want to deal with the jardin the different kind of mossy inclusions that you might get a green tourmaline could also be perfect for you on the other hand garnets and especially demon twin garnets tend to be very very sparkly because they're very high on the refractive index when it comes to gemstones that's one thing that because again of those inclusions emeralds tend to be definitely not as sparkly as some other gems so if you want again that green color but with a little bit more light reflection and brilliance a green garnet could be perfect for you as well thank you so much for watching of course if you have any questions about emeralds please feel free to put them in the comments below and for more information about gemstones and jewelry, check us out on Instagram at Winston Gems and Jewelry.